I think I muted my microphone. There we go. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can hear me out there. Um, I just decided to do an impromptu uh, live session. I, I, I always feel uncomfortable doing just a live by myself, and I feel like I, I need to have somebody with me holding my hand, uh, proverbially, uh, to talk to. But uh, there's a few people in the chat right now. Jesus is the Word of God. And Landon, hopefully you're still there. Um, anyway, so I, I wanted to talk about, um, well, a number of things, actually. Um, of course, quantum effect. And um, <laughs> good, sound is good, good. Uh, the quantum effect on the scriptures, many call the Mandela effect, right? And um, so anyway, uh, okay, cool, Tammy. <laughs> it won't be over your head, I promise. Uh, hey, Twinkles. All right, well, I'm, I'm not going to say hello for a second here so I can finish my sentence, but I, I will. we will give a shout out to everybody momentarily. Um, my poor wife every day has to, hear me riff off after church um it was acts 12 that my pastor was reading from and i, ju I just had a a, a a lengthy conversation via text all this week um over how a lot of people are kind of discussing whether or not we should continue going to church uh, knowing what we know and seeing everyone around us blind to the truth of the times that we're in. And, and, and my personal take on it is, is that we need to be around other believers, even if they're at different levels of understanding. Um, we need one another. Uh, the scripture says, at least it always has said, that to not neglect the gathering of the saints especially as the day approaches and uh, so that said uh, i understand people thinking you know or feeling that they can't stand to be around all these believers who are blind and the pastors reading scriptures that are corrupted and not even seeing it and um i had that just happen today at church my pastor whom i love uh, I've been telling him all week long in lengthy, lengthy text. I didn't bring my phone out here. Great. Uh, in lengthy uh, text to his phone explaining that our scriptures are being supernaturally changed. And um, he doesn't usually respond, but he always tells me when we see each other that he does get my texts and my videos and that he does look at them and he sees them. I get it. But today he read Acts 12, and uh, it's the part where Peter, uh, you know, let's call it up, actually. Um, let's do that. Acts 12. I'm going to Bible Gateway, and I'm going to call it up. Uh, hopefully you guys can still hear me out there. I'm going to call it up on Bible Gateway. Check this out, you guys. Those of you who see, you're, you're going to get this. Acts 12. Okay. This is the part. Let me show you. Let's see. Laptop screen. Okay. So this is the part where James has just been killed. He's been martyred. And uh, Peter is imprisoned. Yeah. It's the music. Yeah. Blinding spells and the music for years. Yeah, that may be, may be it, Tammy. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. So look, so he's reading through the scripture, praise God. And um, <laughs> it talks about the death of Herod down here, right? Uh, this is after Peter escapes. It's really cool because if you remember, um, Peter is, is in prison. He's chained um, he is chained to two guards. He's chained each, both arm, 
and there's two guards at the door. So there's four dudes guarding him 24-7. Okay, 16 men to guard Peter. Okay? So, and Peter is asleep, right? And, uh, and the scripture goes on to tell us this. Check this out. So it says, Days of eleven, bro, they seized him. What version am I in? Let me make sure I'm in the version that, okay, well, I'm in ESV. That's cool. So he says, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him saying, get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know what was being done by, by the angel was real. Like Peter's like thinking, he's thinking, uh, maybe, maybe I'm just dreaming or something, you know? So he's just going along with a dream he thinks he's having, right? So, so he, he walks out. And then when they had passed the first and second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. The gate opened for them on its own accord. And they went out and went along one street. And immediately the angel left him. When Peter finally realized, he came to himself and he said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. Right? And, okay. So when he realized this, he goes to the house of Mary where he also, he probably realized they were all praying because it tells us ahead of time. He, he, he tells us ahead of time um, that uh, they were fervently praying for Peter's release in the upper room. They were praying for him, right? And so he goes to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose name was Mark, where they were gathered together and were praying. And when he knocked at the door of the gateway, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. Recognizing Peter's voice and her joy, she didn't even open the gate, but she ran in and reported that Peter was standing at the gate. They said to her, you're out of your mind. So here they are. They're in the upper, the upper room. Sorry, not the upper room. They're in the room, Mary's house, praying for Peter's release. And a woman goes to the door, somebody's knocking, and it's Peter. They've been praying fervently for his release. And they say she's nuts. But then here's where it gets interesting. It says, now this is in the ESV. And we'll, we'll just, this is in all versions, this corruption, by the way. Okay? It says, where is it? You're out of your mind. But she kept insisting that it was so. And they kept saying, it's his angel, folks. The scriptures always said, it's his ghost. They Remember, they were expecting him to be dead. Okay? Even though <laughs> they should have been expecting him to be alive, right? I mean, we're supposed to believe. We pray, right? Uh, ask in my name and it shall be so, Jesus says. So, so they're praying. And uh, they say it's his angel. Well, that's in all the script. I looked at ESV. I looked at HCSB, which is a Holman Christian Study Bible. The King James, of course. Um, while my pastor's reading this, and I forget what version he was reading. It might have been NASB. But uh, it's up on the screens. We got these big screens in our church. And it says, it is his angel. It said it's his ghost, folks, okay? We do have angels. God assigns an angel that, that, that keeps over us. That's to watch over us. There, that, is a, that is doctrinally true. But that angel, if you're dead, that angel doesn't go and speak on your behalf, okay? So, so that's not a doctrine, all right? That's a falsehood. So Peter continues knocking, and then when they opened... Uh, they saw him and were amazed, okay? Now, it goes on. Then it talks about the death of Herod. 
So Herod gets ticked off with the people of Tyre and Sidon, and they came to him with one accord, and having persuaded Blastus, the king's chamberlain, I don't even know about that name, Blastus, I don't know about that. Uh, they asked for peace because their country depended on the king's country for food. Okay. Then, on the appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat upon the throne, and delivered an oration to them. Now, my pastor this morning was reading these scriptures, okay? And I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at the daggone screen, and it comes down here. By the way, Herod dies because he they start saying, this is a God talking to us, and he takes all the glory for himself. And he doesn't give God the glory. And then it goes on to say that he was eaten by worms and breathed his last. We have from Josephus, that didn't happen like at that moment. He got sick, eaten by worms, and then he died like, you know, in days or something. Okay. But the scripture doesn't give that length of time, whatever. Okay. And then it goes on to say, And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem. This is, this is Acts 12, people. Paul was Saul. Barnabas and Saul did not return from Jerusalem. Barnabas and Paul returned from Jerusalem. Okay? Saul used to attack the Christians. Remember, he had Stephen stoned and he held the cloaks, right? And, and he was going on his way to Damascus because he had permission to go and kill Christians in Damascus. Then Jesus knocks him down and a bright light shines around him. Y'all, if you've read the scriptures, you know the story, right? And that, that Saul is blinded. And, uh, and then God talks to a, uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name right now. Uh, yeah, thank you, Tammy. So God talks to, uh, I cannot think of his name. It's another man in the town that Paul is heading towards Damascus. And he tells him Saul is coming and you are to help him. Uh, he's going to be my servant. And he and he's the guy's like, well, Lord, you know, Saul's been killing all the Christians, you know. No, Saul is going to be my servant unto the Gentiles, and he's going to preach the gospel, and I'm going to show him what he must suffer for my namesake. And I'm paraphrasing, but God gave Ananias, Ananias, that's right, with an S on the end, by the way. Yes, thank you, Tammy. Thank you. Cool. So. Praise God. See, we need each other. And this wasn't over your head. <laughs> so look. So, and I'm doing this part. I'm just doing it off the top of my head. So Ananias, he's an older fella. And he's got to lead blind Saul. Saul. Around. And then he prays for him. And remember? And then the scales fall off of his eyes. Right? Y'all remember that part? And, uh... And then uh, Saul is given a new name, Paul. So here we go. We're again, my pastor, right on. My pastor is reading this to the congregation. Hmm. And Barnabas and Saul <laughs> returned from Jerusalem when they had completed their service. Saul of Tarsus became Paul. Uh, forgive me if I seem a little angry, but I am a little ticked off. First of all, the scriptures are being supernaturally changed. Praise God, we see it. But it really does kind of upset me that so many, even our pastors, so many, either refuse or cannot see this and sit there and read these scriptures. Now I get it. What's he going to do? In the on the spot, explain to them, hey, you know, this is really supposed to say Paul. I mean, that, that, I, I could do that. I would do it. Put me up on the platform. I'll do it. <laughs> you know, but uh, you wouldn't get very far in, in the message he's trying to give, right? Um, I'm going to call him on this. Absolutely. Um, 
I hope that he sees this. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's frustrating. So anyway, but this isn't, this is why I decided to do an impromptu live piece. Um, let me change to the main camera here. There we go. Get that little screen out of there. Um, look, our children are literally being taught. Yeah, I know he should. Jesus is the word. Thanks. I appreciate you all's feedback while I'm going along, too. Um, our children are being taught in modern physics that we live in a multiverse holographic projection. And um, they're going to use the quantum affected changes. Now, you all understand it's not just the scriptures. It's every aspect of life. In a sense, that's an, a blessing because how many people actually read the scriptures, even Christians, right? And so every area of life has been touched. Whatever it is that turns you on, you're going to see something that's going to, you're going to go, oh, something ain't right with that, you know. Uh, no, I am your father, you know. <laughs> something ain't right with that. So, um, anyway, uh, I want to show a piece, and it's called um, What is Reality? And it is a very well-produced video on understanding modern physics. And for the Tammy Porters in the world, <laughs> I'm just kidding, Tammy. Just kidding. But for those who want to think that they won't understand, which I know they will because they have a mind uh, from the Most High, they see the changes. They see a lot more than most. Um, this uh, do with Gramatria, the actual words they choose to change. Uh, that's, it could, but that's a whole other story. Um, it has actually, it has to do with a thing that I've taught on a number of times called, called the Hegelian dialectic. Okay. Um, this is, Satan uses this process again and again. Now you won't hear this taught in your Sunday morning church. A guy named Hegel, uh, it's named after, he was a philosopher, uh, Satan uses this over and over. And to simply put, look it up, Hegelian dialectic. I highly recommend that you come to understand how that works. It's, and simply put, it is, it is problem, reaction, solution. Okay? And they use a fancy Hegelian dialectic, you know. It's, it's just basically two opposing ideas, seemingly opposing, and then you, you synthesize them together to create what you could say is the truth. First of all, the two opposing ideals are usually, uh, 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 they're, uh, what's the word, uh, presumed. Uh, you know, like uh, Republicans and Democrats. Oh, there are two opposing ideas. No, that's a presumption. They're actually one and the same. Um, but this, this is a this methodology is used again and again in modern philosophies, and it, and, it, and they apply it in every area of our lives. And this is how Satan gets us, tricks us again and again. We fall for it constantly. And it was, it was a concept of dialectics was given new life by a guy named George Wilhelm Friedrich, Friedrich Hegel. Okay? And so, again, it's, it is thesis, antithesis, the opposite. And then you create the synthesis. Okay? To come at the truth, quote unquote. The, the, the truth that you wanted to have in the first place that isn't really the truth. And, and okay, so to try and clarify this, we're experiencing reality change, okay? 
we, we are it, it, in every area of our lives. We, we, those of us who see, we know it's true. There are many who refuse to see it. Um, so that change is really happening, but they're going to assign the cause of the change to us living in a, a multiverse, a projected holographic multiverse. That's what they're going to say is what we live in. And they're going to use the reality shifts, the reality changes as quote unquote proof that what they're saying is correct. Okay. It's not. The scriptures have told us that we would be in a great, a great tribulation. Jesus said it would be the greatest that ever has been or ever will be. Okay. In another place, it's written that the hearts of men will fail. Their hearts will fail them for fear of what's coming upon the world. So I want to show you guys this, this video piece. Um, and again, I want you to see this. And I'm going to play a section and possibly we're going to pause and kind of talk about it and explain Again, this video is a presentation done by those who are saying we live in a multiverse, a projected hologram, modern physicists, okay? And they're going to teach, not going to, they are teaching our children this, okay? So, also, uh, let's see, we've got a phone number. If you want to call in, if you have a question or comments, I think you should be able to see that number down there. Um, now, mind you, you're going to be live on the program, okay? Yeah, it's two wings of the same bird. Um, but you can call that number right there. It's 803-580-5171. Uh, 803-580-5171. You can call that number, of course. Uh, the number is only good during this live program, which uh, today's date, I should have said, is Sunday, March 31st, 2019. It's about 4.08 Eastern Standard Time. Um, and again, I'm going to play this intro. I'm going to play it full screen. And um, I want you all to see this. I want you to see how they're presenting this. They're telling partial truths, okay? Um, look, we, have, we must remember to, to, re, to remember what God has done. God spoke all things into being, okay? Uh, he didn't use mathematics. I don't care how wonderful you think math is. Math did not, the universe is not created mathematically. Just because you can have a equation that seems to match what you see doesn't mean the equation proves anything all you've done it, it's it's math is a language of symbols so math with math all you've done in science is is described what you're seeing you haven't proven anything okay so i want you to watch this and and we'll come back in just a sec and Talk about it. I want to tell you about the universe. What it is, how it came to be, what its building blocks are. I want to tell you how the future creates the past, which then creates the future. But first, I want to tell you about crystals. You might be surprised to know that a crystal isn't an expensive piece of glass or a chandelier in some fancy dining room. The word crystal simply means a pattern that is periodic. Look at this checkerboard pattern. See how it continues to spread out infinitely in each direction? That means it's a periodic pattern. So that's a two-dimensional crystal. This is another two-dimensional crystal. And this is another. You can also have three dimensional crystals. By the way, this 3D glass is called crystal because its atoms are actually arranged 
in a crystalline pattern. So, see how I'm projecting this three-dimensional crystal to a two-dimensional image on the sand? See how the 2D projection looks distorted because of the angle of the projection? That 2D image also has a pattern, but it isn't periodic. So, it's not a crystal. But there's a deep connection between the 2D object on the sand and the 3D mother crystal. This distorted 2D pattern is called a quasi-crystal. A quasi-crystal in a certain dimension, in this case 2D, is a projection of a crystal in a higher dimension, in this case 3D. A group of physicists in Los Angeles is working on a new physics theory where a particular 8D crystal, yep, that's right, an eight-dimensional crystal, is projected to 4D at a very particular angle, which forms a 4D quasi-crystal. And from this 4D quasi-crystal, they derive a 3D quasi-crystal, which they believe is the fundamental substructure of all of reality. This 3D quasi-crystal has a fundamental building block, a tetrahedron, which is a three-dimensional equilateral triangle. The size of each edge on this shape is the smallest possible length that can exist. This is called the Planck length. It's 10 to the 35 times smaller than a meter. So you know how your TV screen is broken down into building blocks called pixels? A pixel is the smallest possible indivisible unit of the 2D screen. So think of reality as your TV screen, but in 3D. And think of the tetrahedron as a 3D pixel, the smallest possible indivisible unit of reality. The tetrahedra in the quasi-crystal combine with other tetrahedra using complex mathematical rules to fill up all of the space in the universe. Each tetrahedron only has a few specific states in which it can exist at any given moment. And because of the rules of how these pixels connect to each other, if one tetrahedron is in a certain state, this dictates the states of many other tetrahedra throughout all of space. But here's the weird thing. If a Okay, I was muting my microphone. Uh, hopefully you all can hear me. Let's pause it there for a second, okay? So, understand, now this, this video, I think it's well done. Uh, and, um, I, again, it's presenting the truth of the lies that they're going to teach our children. Okay? Am I making sense there? It's the truth of the physics of what they're going to teach, okay? Okay, now listen. She just said a number of things that are very important for us to understand how they're actually causing the changes in our realm, in the world that we live in, okay? They are, remember she talked about the Planck scale, the tiniest particle, and that its state affects all the others all around? They're telling you the truth, okay? Uh, a drop of truth in an ocean of lies, okay? And so, this is my concern, and I've been very, very concerned about this, is we've been seeing these changes. I personally have been seeing them since 2016. I've talked to people that have seen it as far back as 2009. Um, that's how this works, by the way. That's a, a whole other discussion we need to get into is okay they recently announced uh, IBM created a quantum computer and they were able to change a particle by, and send it back into time a half a second okay the, remember what she just said about each particle affecting all the others okay yeah, thank you, Tammy. Affecting all the others that they're interconnected with at the Planck scale, the tiniest of tiny, the Planck scale, where, where space, distance, and time has no meaning because it's so small. Um, 
when they affect a, a change, it propagates out from the micro, small, to the macro, large, reality, the world, the universe we live in. Um, okay. Oh, you probably, many of you have probably heard this before. Is Would you rather have a million dollars handed to you or a penny that geometrically increases each day for 30 days? Which one would you rather have handed to you? Okay. It turns out that the penny geometrically increasing turns out to be like something like a half a billion dollars or something, right? As opposed to a million dollars. This is what I'm getting at. Is that tiny change that they made by sending a particle back in time, okay? Right. They're changing information. They're, that particle, that tiny change propagated to a much larger scale. They're telling us, well, we just sent a particle back in time a half a second. But even they t tell us, they know that the state change of a tiny particle affects all the others. She just said that on the video. This is what I mean by is they're telling us the truth in an ocean of lies. Okay? This is why I watch pieces of video like this because they are flat out telling us what they're doing, okay? But they're going to, again, they're going to teach our children, and us, if, if we don't have understanding, they're going to teach us that we live in a multiverse, a holographic projected multiverse. That is the lie, okay? That's the Hegelian dialectic. We're all going to experience all these changes, so obviously what they're telling us is completely true, Right? Y'all follow me? I hope you do. I hope I'm making sense here. So, the reason this is so pressing to me and, and is, is that these change propagations, this is, is going to get larger, okay? It's going to be, okay, right. It's going to get larger and more frequent. So, it's going to get to a point where even those who are asleep are going to see crazy things and they're going to think they're losing their mind. Okay? Remember, men's hearts will fail them for fear of what's coming upon the earth. Okay. So, look. We'll watch a little bit more of this. Okay, I highly recommend it. I'm going to post a link to it, the, the full length video with this video so that you can, and I'll have it posted. Um, I highly recommend that you watch this, but watch it with discerning eyes. Look, they're telling you what they're doing, but it's, and it's, in, it's in a wash in the notion of lies that they're telling you this is reality. It's not. It's it's how they're affecting our reality. They're, okay? In, in a very real way. They call it science, but it's divination. Okay? Um, so anyway, this is what's going on. This is propagating. They're, they're injecting information. A human being did not go back into time. Okay? They sent information back. Uh Again, I'm going to put up that other camera. Hopefully, you can still hear me. Um, there's the number again. If you have questions or you want to call in, 803-580-5171. Um, they're injecting information back into time. Okay? And, so to speak, to hear it. Anyway, and that information is propagating back into time and then it's coming forward and raising the bar on our understanding today see how it's circular right have you all ever seen what an ouroboros is it's really funny is satan even in the imagery for satan he he gives us imagery i'm going to show this to you aura ouroboros i think this is what, how you spell it ouroboros okay that's what it looks like right there. Have you all ever seen that? 
Okay, I know I'm jumping all over the place. This is this. See this? This is a representation of Satan. Okay, a snake eating its tail. Right? That's what's happening right now. Is they are injecting information back into the past. That information is now forward propagating from our past and increasing our knowledge forward. And then they, again, inject information into our path. Do you see the circular pattern that they're doing, right? Okay. This is why I am so very, very concerned about this. It, it's, it's, it's been a little gentle in a sense. Okay. It's, it's been easy to deal with, relatively speaking, of what's about to hit us. Okay. It's going to geometrically increase. Okay? And it's... People you like the penny. Yes. And it's going to be really bad. It's going to be rough. I mean, I tell my wife, it wouldn't surprise me if we, we have a brown blanket on our bed. And that one morning I wake up, it's green. I mean, it's... Where people just, they'll be, they'll think they're losing their mind, you know, where our bathroom has this orange sort of textured paint and one day we go in and it's yellow or it's red. I mean, stupid. Yes. But see, okay, let, let me address that. George said, CERN is coming back stronger, but they don't even need it to because they already injected the a change propagation i'm making these terminology this seems to make sense to me yeah it's like a butterfly effect but that's that's how they want us to to think about it tammy is is they want us to think about um the way they present it just like this video that i'm turning you all on to right it's the way that they want us to think of it they want to control the way we think of it Okay, we take their information, but then the, you know, the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. At least that's what the scripture always said. Uh, God only knows what it says now, right? <laughs> Hopefully it still says that. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, so let's watch a little bit more of this and you'll see. That when you watch this, you have to you have to read it, read between the proverbial lines, and, uh, okay, and we'll check this out now. Certain tetrahedron can be in any one of just a few possible states in a given moment. Who or what chooses the state it should be in at any given moment? Well, for such a choice to be made, we need to scientifically, mathematically, and logically bring in a new element into physics. And that element? Is consciousness. If you're not a scientist, you might be surprised to learn that nobody actually knows the exact value of the speed of light. We have a close approximation, but not the exact value. The closest we can get to measuring it has to do with the precision of our machines. But no matter how precise our machines get, we will never be able to measure the exact speed of light without a theory that tells us what it is and why it is. And none of the current physics theories do that. Oh look, Professor Einstein, you look so cute. So I look pretty here? Yes, yes. No, wait, that's my bad side. But if I go... Yes, that's good. What if I stick out my tongue like this? Is that good? Oh, oh, oh. Ah! Our best physics theories, Einstein's theory of relativity and quantum mechanics, both use the speed of light as a starting point. Yeah. In other words, they use an inexact measurement of the speed of light without explaining why it is, what it is, or why the universe even has a speed limit in the first place. We need a new theory. And such a theory is what the physicists and mathematicians of quantum gravity research in Los Angeles are working on. They call it... A
Mike, thank you. Yeah, I stopped. There you go. Thank you. Uh, I stopped. Uh, hey, Paul, what's up? Our reality, they're saying, is built upon a matrix of eight dimensions. And that our reality, the realm we live in, is three dimensions plus one. The, the plus one, the fourth, is time. Okay? They look at time. We've been taught to look at time for generations as a linear, forward linear only ideal. When in reality, all time is now. You see, you know, God is who, who was and is and is to come. Right? He's eternal. Right? So, so that's another thing, too, is that eternity is not a long time. Eternity is without time as we know it. Eternity is outside of time. Time is within eternity. We've been conditioned to think of time as forward linear only, and it never was. It never was. That's, that's what's uh, someone had written a little while ago. I, th I think it was, uh, I forget who it was. Um, he had written that it's kind of good in some ways that we're seeing these changes in the scriptures, you know, because it's waking us up. It's it's driving us uh, to, um, my mic is unmuted, right? Yeah. It's driving us to hunker down and really get real with our scriptures, with, with our God, to listen to that still small voice. Um you know, uh, to argue against those who say we're spreading fear. No, we're, we're, I think we're encouraging people to, yeah, to get uh, real with our faith. To hunker down and get real. Get, get your house in order. Okay? Um, <laughs> anyway, it's very hard for me uh, to not go all over the place. Even when I'm talking to somebody, uh, it's, I don't have someone to respond back to me uh in a dialogue it's very difficult for me anyway because my brain goes all over the place um paul i think you do that sometimes <laughs> our minds are as one but anyway um where was i so there the, for those who say that reality is not changing okay and they buy into the scientific rhetoric. And then they'll also say, uh, those of you who think the scriptures are changing and that reality is changing, you're trying to say we live in a multiverse like those physicists say. No, we're, the physicists are saying it's a multiverse. And I'm saying that they're going to use the fact that we're seeing the changes as their proof to, to all of humanity that we do live in a projected holographic multiverse. That's the Hegelian dialectic. Okay? That's the dialectic. It's... And, and, and look, all it's going to take is one generation. It's going to take one generation for us to be lost. Okay? If we don't wake up as many people as we can and ourselves and raise our... Ch you know, the scripture says... To raise your child and teach your child the way they should go. When they were old, they will not soon depart from it. This fits in that. Okay? If we don't teach our children that their reality is malleable, okay, that it is changing, then we're, we're going to fail our children. Okay? We're going to lose them. And I think that we're going to answer to God for that. And, and this is why, another reason why I'm so fervent about this. Because I get challenged by pastors and other perceived leaders. You know, why don't you focus on the important thing? Like, you know, tell them Jesus loves you. <laughs> like, okay, well, you know, um, I, they should know that if they're a Christian already, by the way. That he died on a cross and rose on the third day. Okay, come on, people. Born of a virgin. I mean, do we have to stick for our entire life to the rudiments of the faith? I think uh, the scriptures indicate that we shouldn't. But so many times we're challenged that we're wasting our time 
on all of this rigmarole. And I think that, well, we're not going to be able to wake up people that can't see, right? If they can't see, I mean, I think even Paul and, and others, uh, Photohelix and Awakened Saint, we, we've all talked about this for one time or another. Um, you can't coerce someone into seeing these changes, right? And um, I don't know. You can tell them if they see it, then then wonderful. Uh, tell them the truth, but you can't you can't force them or or convince them of anything. Um, but anyway, oh. I did. <laughs> Those of you, uh, uh, let me change gears here real quick. Um, let's see. I've got, uh, which camera am I going to go to here? I'm going to go to the main camera. Um, I had announced that I had a giveaway this month. And, um, and I'm going to show you guys. I'm... I've already given away one device, uh, uh, a tablet. Let me grab one. So, this is one tablet, Amazon Fire, and they're new. I just opened them because I've been updating them and. Uh, this is one of the devices. I gave away one already, and uh, this one's going to be given away. Uh, some people are going to get a memory key. It's not just a memory key. It has a bunch of videos on it uh, that are, are cool. Like, uh, let me see. I dropped that one. <laughs> Got a bunch of stuff on it. See if it pops up on there. Yeah. But I am today. I Oh, there we go. Sweet. So check this out. I'll show you the laptop screen. So this these memory keys that I'm giving away uh, have uh, the externalization of a hierarchy in PDF form. I don't know if you've heard of that. Uh, it's not required reading, but uh, uh, Blavatsky, 50 Reasons the Earth is Flat, uh, is the Bible from Heaven, uh, a bunch of videos about CERN. Okay, I call these the In the Know Video series. Okay. Best kept secrets of the dollar. Hey, here's one with me talking about solar geoengineering on a radio station, Christian radio station. There's some software on there to make sure you can play the videos. The co, this is a guy named Irving Baxter. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Check this out. You ever heard of this? Of course, the audio is not playing, right? Hmm. Oh, I know why. Because it's quick time. Irvin Baxter does had did a series on end times videos, and I put uh, put that on here. There it is. Can you hear that music? Recognize it? It's cool stuff. This is a series on the coming one world religion. It'll open your eyes to a lot of things. It's a, it's actually a little dated by this point. Uh, we know of a number of things new of recent. Um, oh, DV Age of Deceit by Gon Shamira. If you've never heard of that, these are ISO discs. They are DVDs that you can play, but you can also burn them and give them to friends. So all of that, all of that stuff is going, giving away a handful of these. Uh, I realized in... Uh, and shipping of one device that it was going to cost me an extra fortune 
to ship large things. So I'm keeping everything kind of small. Uh, gonna give away hard drives, external hard drives, okay? And uh, this also has a bunch of videos. This is a one terabyte store external storage. I've got uh, the Aaronic Prayer, which we're gonna close out this piece with, uh, which is the Lord bless you and keep you, right? You all know that numbers uh, 624. Anyway, uh, giving that away, but I am going to announce that I am giving not the TV screen that's up there, but there's a computer up there, and uh, I'm giving it away. Uh, let's see if we can. Well, I'll show you real quick. Check it out. Overview camera. Check this out. So this is the computer. If you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah. It plugs into the TV and turns in your TV into a computer. So now I'm giving all this stuff away because I have it. And uh, not that tech is the answer to all of life's ails, but on the stuff that I'm giving away is a whole lot of videos. There's a, there's a, on that computer up there that I'm giving away, I'm going to give away a couple of computers. Um, there's videos on them. There's Bible software. Um, this is ministry. There's going to be tools for you to use to grow in your knowledge. Uh, while we still can, and to pass this information around to others, okay? So, uh, also going to be mailing out uh, a DVD series, and, and it's okay, I'm not stealing from somebody, but it's a guy called The Fuel Project, and it's a series called Know Your Enemy, and uh, I bought several copies from him directly, but I made copies of the DVDs and I burn them and I'm sending them out. It's a four DVD set. These people are going to win these, giving them away. It's awesome. You, you watch that series and you'll know a ton about how our enemy has worked throughout history. Okay. Yes, that, that, that's right. That computer, by the way, that I showed you is connected via DVD, uh, HDMI, I mean, um, and turns your TV into a computer. And it's even powered by the USB slot, but it comes with a, a little wall wart, too. Uh, I'm giving a wireless keyboard with it, too. So, anyway, I just wanted to point that out. And the person who's winning that computer... Uh, hang on. That's, so many mice. So many things. So, many, so much time or so little time. So many things. Let me see. Where is it? There it is. Check this out, y'all. Hopefully it'll let me do it. There it goes. Yes, allow. Check this out. So, here's the computer. Hopefully you can still hear me. So, I, I'm able to, there's a tool on there I can remote support for you. It's something that you have to run if you need help with something. But, there's the Word, which is a absolutely fabulous free Bible software, okay? And uh, that's on that computer. And anyway, so the person who is winning this computer today, and I'm going to be mailing it out, is Cindy Derringer, okay? And uh, so she's getting this computer. I've been setting it up. I put some put some in the know videos on there. Age of Deceit by Gans Vermeera, and uh, some stuff about transhumanism that people should know and understand. If you don't know what transhumanism is, uh, because uh, <laughs> quite frankly, uh, 
the believe it or not, the quantum affected Bible in our world is not the only deception game in town. Uh, anyway, uh, so yes, Cindy Derringer is getting that computer. I'm going to find out what her mailing address is, and uh, and that's getting mailed out to her hopefully in the next day or so. Um, anyway, so. Uh, I'll probably also send out some DVDs to a number of different people um, that I've talked to over the past year or two. Yeah, that's right. It is on YouTube, by the way. That DVD series is on YouTube. Uh, but you've got a lot of people who won't go on YouTube. And they'll watch TV. Um, and so... Just give them the DVD series, and it's you can you can use it even for a Bible study. It's in little ten minute vignettes, and um, anyway, so the whole reason I'm giving this stuff away is because God has has given to me. I mean, uh, you know, we are supposed to be joyous givers, and it's not just about money, folks. It's about our time, about our our, our love and our encouragement for one another. Uh, and maybe it's about giving away a memory key. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, uh, look, I see a number of people in here. I'm going to do a shout out real quick. Uh, let's see. Who do we have here? Participants. Well, I've only got four. Me, George Sid, Landon Pets. And Tammy Porter, but then I saw, I saw Scott Miller pop in. What's up, dude? And I know I saw Paul pop in. Yeah, that's right, because he said the part about know your enemy on YouTube. That's right. Uh, who else? Jesus is the word. Yep, he's been he's been jumping in in here. That's cool. And Deborah O'Connor says, I tried waking up others to no avail, so I'm trying to work on my relationship with the Father. Amen. Listen, we can be a example of Christ to others. Uh, we should be, as a matter of fact. So we should live a life that, that is at, at best exemplifies Him. Um, yeah, I gotta say, tinkered what is it? Tinker the Christ Lover. <laughs> that's, that's a funny name. Uh, it's good that we see it, but I won't say it's good that it's happening. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Um, anyway, so look, guys. Uh, uh, these changes are going to increase in fervency. They're going to increase... Um, in, in uh, frequency, so you're going to see them more frequently, and you're going to see more bombastic, crazy over-the-top changes. Um, uh, just in the past week, I posted a lot of a lot of stuff. Actually, uh, technological finds where we had, uh, you know, the cell phones weren't invented until the 19, I believe, 1980s, 1990s that we started seeing them come about. Now we've got people using daggone wireless cell phones in the 1920s. Vid video, old film archival footage of ladies, you know, talking on a wireless phone. People on wireless phones in cars in the 1940s and 50s. So, uh, yeah, anyway. Look, guys, I want to encourage all of you to do what you felt uh, feel led to do. Every little thing it, to God is not a little thing. Okay? You remember the, the parable of the talents, right? One got one, and one got five, and one got ten talents. And the, the one who just hid away his one talent was the evil servant. Okay? And if he would have done something with just the one he had, he would have been, it would have been well done, good and faithful servant. Okay? And 
I want to encourage y'all is, is don't fear man. Don't fear mockery from man. You're going to get mocked, people. Come on. Stand up for Jesus Christ. Stand up for truth. Okay? Stand up in such a way that they don't dare mock you. Okay? It's just like in the beginning of this talk where Herod had daggone 16 men to guard one guy, Peter. You know? And why? Because Peter probably exuded Holy Spirit. Okay? And Herod knew something was up with this man, that he had to put all these people on him. And so... I want to just encourage you guys. Um, and uh, there's so much more I'd like to talk about about my scattered brain. I got so many different subjects. Um, if you all haven't heard about Noah Hyde, it's a big deal. It is a big deal. They're going to use it as uh, universal morality rules. And there are actually laws already in our nation. People, they're just not enacted upon you're going to know about it soon. Um, and they sound biblical. They are actually what this nation was founded on. Okay? And um, uh, that's another thing. is I've been a patriot my entire life, but now I know the truth of this nation. Now, sadly, is we were never a Christian nation. That's why when our leaders... Most recently, maybe uh, uh, Obama comes to mind when they said we were never a Christian nation. We all said, what are you talking? No, actually, we weren't. We were, we were duped. We were deceived, people. We were never a Christian nation. They let us believe that we were so that we would do and act accordingly. But no, um, I'm sorry to say we weren't. Um, Anyway, lots of other things I don't want to bring up because it requires that we have a long dialogue about it. But listen, you know that God is in control. God is truly in control. He has told us that these things would be so the way they are. So we, we, we tell one another about this, but we don't need to really lament over it. I mean, eh. I think I'm more, I, I get sad because of how many people I know are going to be lost. Um, that I'm, I'm not happy about. But I know who and what I am in Christ Jesus. And you do too. And so we don't need to fear for ourselves. We don't even need to be concerned about ourselves. Okay? But just... Be prepared to be salt and light as things get worse. Okay? As these things get crazier and crazier, don't be prepared to gloat and say, I told you so. No. Our time is going to come when they're crying out to God going, how is this happening? And we'll be able to say, we have been saying, t trying to get you to understand and now, here's the way you should turn. Right? Okay. Because the scripture, I believe, has indicated also that it will be the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So, it also says in the scriptures, where sin abounds, grace abounds greatly. Right? So, we know that's scripture, and that is truth. So, uh, sin is certainly abounding. So, what does that mean? Grace is abounding all the more, okay? And we should be a conduit uh, in Christ Jesus for grace, okay? So with that said, I, I want to I close in a prayer. Uh, of course, the prayer I've been closing in for a time now, and it's uh, number 624, and I'm going to do it in the Hebrew, okay? So, again, uh, God tells Moses, and Aaron, you tell Aaron, this is how you will mark my people. And God says, I will, will, will provide the blessing. I will be the blessing. I will be the blesser. Okay? 
So this prayer is not a prayer of blessing. It's a prayer that you're marked and God is the blesser. Okay. So, Yavare Kika Adonai, Veyish Me Rika. Yaea Adonai Peneveleka Vehuneka. Yisa Adonai Peneveleka Veyusemleka Shalom. In Jesus' name, amen.